But before we get into Lillard and Harden, a little bit more in this discussion, OP, you and I were having a few minutes ago about uh, minutes restrictions for the season for Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama. I get what you were saying about how guys are coming into the league and they're not ready and LeBron was ready when he came in. And I get that. But that's not going to change. And the reason I think they, there should be a minutes restriction for like 20 minutes a night for them beginning of the season is to protect them from getting injured because they are big assets that the teams are hoping will be their franchise for the next 10 or 12 years. This is kind of the world we live in now. It's, it's not going to change where, okay, guys are going to come in now and it's going to be you have to come in as an upper class. But no, a guy's still going to be one and done coming into the NBA and, or you know if, if they were able to come in after two years, whatever it is. So we're still going to always fight this. So if that's the case, guys not coming into the league, I, I hear you on, on not being ready and being ready physically. You're seeing guys needing more time to develop now than you ever have before. But – if this is the if this is the reality, this is the world we live in. We kind of have to adjust around it. So I, that's why I look at a minutes restriction, saying, okay, this is what's going to protect them from themselves, protect them from getting hurt, and help teams protect their assets uh, going forward. Well, yeah, I, I can see what you're trying to say, but hear me out once again. The reason, like myself and a lot of guys from the '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s were able to play and play through injuries and play hurt and everything else is because we built a tolerance for pain. We built a tolerance, and we built our bodies to where we could withstand stuff. The way they're doing it now, listening to these analytics geeks, okay, that don't play and don't know what's going on, they're doing a disservice to these players and the game because they will continually stay getting hurt because they're not building up that tolerance. And so that's the problem I'm having. Everybody keeps thinking less games is going to help. It's going to continue the injuries. I'm not a doctor, but I've been through this. I know what it takes to be an NBA player. And I know the physicality aspects of it. And so it's like you have to build that up. Everybody – Again, you see Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis has a cycle now of getting hurt. I can tell you exactly the day, the month, and when and the time when Anthony Davis is going to get hurt during the season. I can do the same with Chris Paul. I can do the same with uh, most of these guys that get hurt routinely because they're not building up a tolerance for the pain. Right, but, uh, okay, so these guys come in the league then, and they start building up their tolerance. It's not going to happen in school. It's not going to happen in if they're playing in a, a smaller schedule for one year and they play 35 games and a couple of tournament games. So they're going to need some time for that to happen. So so why not have that that restriction to keep them healthy and keep them going until that can happen? I'm not saying this should be a minutes restriction forever, but for their rookie year, when they come into the league until they, they see what kind of pounding they can take, I, I don't see how that's a bad idea. They need to play. What helped me? was Summer League. Summer League helped me. After I got to Seattle, signed a contract and everything else, we started playing basketball. And then I went, I came down to L.A. and I played in the L.A. Summer League. But that Summer League had Magic Johnson, Akeem Olajuwon, Dominic. They had all the NBA players. So I was getting used to the physicality in the summer by playing against the guys that I was going to see during the season. That's not what's happening here. 90% of these guys will not even be on a roster. And so to me, you're not getting the chance to build that up even in the summer league. Um, Wembenyama's going to play two games, and then that's it. That's not going to help him playing two games. Already unlimited minutes, it's not going to help him because now his body is going to shut back down. And that's the problem. It's like when you <laughs> – if you don't stretch – Go out and play a get basketball game without stretching. See what happens. And that's what these guys are doing. Unfortunately, they're doing it on a bigger scale. It's not just per game. It's per season and per career. Because now by taking a game off when your body is revved up, you are destroying yourself. And no one's seeing it because they don't care. Yeah, but, but I, I don't see how that changes. I mean, I, I don't see, I don't see how that games. changes from now. Play more games. I guarantee you, you'll have less injuries. 
Yeah, but but that, I, I, I I'm with you. I'm, look, I'm with you on it. But that but that's just not the way the NBA world is going now. I mean, you you see guys now, and it used to be a star would play 75 games, right? So they'd have a few games here and there, be off as long as they had a a, a season that was bereft of injuries. But now it's like 60 games. You know, you're, you're lucky if Embiid gets to 60 games. LeBron and AD play 60 games. So that, that that's like that's become the new normal. And I don't know that, I mean, it's like trying to throw a pebble in the ocean and stopping it. Like, that's the way the NBA is going now. I don't know that we'll ever, I, I are know. we ever going to get you back to playing right. more games? I don't think that's I don't happen. think so. You are absolutely right. I do agree with you on that. This is the new normal. Going back to when you first started this whole thing with Michael Jordan. You know Michael Jordan played like eight or nine years, 82 games? Mm-hmm. At least like eight or nine, 82 games he played, including his last year. And so to me, you know, it's it was a different game. And so we are here now. But if these people, these analytics guys, you know, and, forget, you know, I, I apologize for calling them geeks, but these analytics guys, you know, actually I don't apologize. Um, wow, look at you. These wow. These analytics okay. guys want to keep thinking that this is the way it's going to help. It's not. Okay, that's how they're getting jobs. Okay, through numbers, and the numbers are not adding up. Okay, it's about what's in your head, what's in your heart, and what you can t- take and not take. I mean, Kawhi Leonard's career is probably going to be done, all because of load management. You know, he's going to continuously get hurt because when's he going to play? And when he does play, we're going to limit him. And when he does go hard, boop. <laughs> This is a damn endless cycle. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think if I wish there was a solution to it, but I just don't see there being a solution. Play. I, I, I don't. That's man a, up. That, that's gonna. That's yeah. I, I yeah, But that. But that's Put gonna the fall big on boy pants ears. on. <laughs> no, no teams are gonna do that. No teams are gonna do that. I'll show them how to do it. It's look. It's the same. It's thing not as, that hard. I'll it's, show them how to do it, Jason. Right, but it's the same thing as baseball, where pitchers used to pitch complete games. They yeah. would pitch into the seventh inning. That's just not <laughs> the way you guys, do it anymore. You are absolutely right. Gibson, all them cats, they were pitching nine innings. Uh, <laughs> Gaylord Perry, you know, <laughs> freaking just destroy people. Everybody, complete game, complete game. Now you're playing five innings. You have seven pitchers now for a game. Mm-hmm. You come yeah. in for one. You come in for the one batter. You come in for – come on. This, that's what I'm – is this generation, this whole thing is, is so warped now. We're getting – we're paying more for less. Yeah. You that's know, it. I, and, we're all paying more for less. Fans, everybody, we're all paying more for less. And it's not fair. No, but that – but this is – but this is – this is – you know, I, I had this – I had this discussion. This is why I've always believed this. Is like about 20 years ago, in between time when I – when right before I became a, a, a talent, I was a producer uh, at ABC, ABC Sports here in L.A., and a lot of stuff that that went on, we had a we had the person in charge that would just make ridiculous decisions. I'm like, what you're saying, this doesn't make sense. No, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't. Make, I can't believe it. This doesn't make sense. What you're telling me doesn't make sense. None of it made sense. It was, they were they were horrible decisions. And I remember going back after a meeting and talking to to my manager, saying everything that that they they said in that meeting was bad. He goes, I know. And I said. We're not going to be able to put on a good show. We're not going to be able to get guests. We're not going to be able to do. We're not. He goes, I know. And I said, w- Why are you telling me this? He goes, Because we have to adjust. Because this is the world we live in. That person is in charge of this department and is in charge of everything that we do. And this is the world we live in. And this is how they want us to do it. And we have to find a way around it if we're going to to try to do it. I know it, it hamstrings us. It's not the best thing for us clearly. But this is the world we live in. And from then on, I've always understood that, okay, yeah, sometimes there's only so much you can do where you have to, instead of of fighting a battle, saying, okay, if this is the way it's going to be, now I have to find a way around it. And I feel like that's where it is with the NBA. You have to find a way around it now because it's never going to get back to players playing 82 games. LeBron's never going to go for, oh, now I'm going to play 80. No, it's never going to happen because now players have realized, oh, I can still get paid. Superstars can get paid the same amount of money and playing less games. No one's going to call them out on it. So that's why it has to evolve. And that's why I think that's why this idea of, A, you know, Holmgren and Wembenyama playing less minutes because there, there's nothing that's going to make that change and say, okay, guess what? Now you're right. Let's go and let's everybody's going to play more minutes and put more stress on it. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to call them out. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. They have they have 
shirts now with heart monitors. They have the wristband thing that control, you know, for their heart um, blood pressure. They they put all these things on these players, right? They have a masseuse. They have a chiropractor. They have um, in-house chef. They have a uh, private plane. Uh, that you can name all these wonderful amenities that they have, and they all getting hurt more. It's insane. Th- there's only this is the one that really messes with me right now, and I'm not the angry old ex player. You know, <laughs> I don't care. The point is this. They don't even have, they don't have two days anymore. That's been outlawed. Okay. What they have now is you have two hours for practice total. If you want to do two days, it's going to be one hour, one hour. <laughs> it's not going to be, you can't do it. So everybody has one practice and it's two hours. By the time a coach finished talking, you're really running up and down for about 35, 40 minutes. It's insane. And you expecting these guys to stay healthy during the season? All they, I'm telling you, it's it's a big AAU. There's no practices in AAU. It's just play basketball. That's what it, that's what we've gotten to now. But, but and that's not going to change. I mean, AAU is going to have have that kind of season. You're going to still jump from hey, the most games you're going to play, and you're going to play 35 games. Maybe sometimes AU you'll play like, you know, four games in a weekend when you're in a big tournament, but you're still going to hit that 35-40 game, and then suddenly, hey, guess what? Here's the NBA. It's a man's league, man. That is a man's league, 82 games, and now yeah. how many games can you make it through? That, that- I, would do a, I would do a complete overhaul, okay, with the schedule. and the, Because now, like with this in-game tournament that we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. I would just take that as the precursor of changing everything. Okay, I would bring in even more from Europe because they play about 30, 35 games overseas, but it's like once or twice a week. So I would spread the season out that way. Now you can get better quality because you're not going to play 82 games. Okay, we used to say the same thing. We used to say 82 is too much. Okay, so it's not like we're, we're dissing it now. We used to say the same thing, but we just did it you know, for less pay because we love the game so much. I don't think a lot of these guys love the game anymore. I think they're just doing it for the bag. I don't think they really love basketball. Not, I'm not saying everybody. I just say there's some guys I don't think they truly love the game. Well, you know, you know what? I'm with you to, to a point. I don't know if it's about loving the game. I, I, I don't know that there's the emphasis on winning on the importance of winning because that's a fallacy because the NBA is, is the NBA is a lifestyle like hey being a big star being able to play making a lot of money playing and playing basketball no I think everybody loves that I think they all love that but how much do they love winning I think players like winning I think I think they would rather win than not win and there's certain players it's why we gravitate to players like Jordan and Kobe and LeBron who want to win they know they're measured by finals appearances and championships but I think a lot of players hey it's a great lifestyle it's a great life and they get to play and do it but the overall winning winning's nice but it's almost like hey if we can win great but losing is not something that okay i'm gonna really lose a lot of sleep over if we lose we lose only you know only one team can win we'll go as far as we can that i I don't know that there's much of an emphasis on let me tell you something one thing about the nba is this okay and this is what people need to understand okay they're selling a bill of goods because there can only be one champion everybody else the 29 other teams are basically losers. You got to understand, for the NBA, you cannot, you have to either be really, really good, which is about six, seven teams, or really, really bad. You cannot be in the middle at all in the NBA. You cannot be in the middle. You have to be one or the other, really, really good or really, really bad for it to work. 